Greetings everyone in the name of our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, today we're looking at Luke chapter 24, verse 36 to 51. Uh, we talk often of the death of the Lord Jesus, but today we're going to look at something that uh, some people find a little bit more difficult to believe in, and that's the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and he did so, and he also claimed to conquer death before he did so also. Um, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live, even though he dies. He will never die. Um, this belief is the believer's uh, confidence and hope. Uh, this is what uh, worried uh, the Jewish authorities in Jerusalem after Jesus died. And that was so intense. And... And there were witnesses to the resurrection of Christ from the dead afterwards, which also caused an in insane amount of disturbance among people. But what did it mean? What does it mean? Because there are so many theories put forward. You know, some say that Jesus survived death as a ghost or a spirit after, after he apparently rose from the dead. But testimony reveals Jesus physically, in, in the flesh, after he rose from the dead. Um, in this very Luke passage, it says, It is I, see my wounds, touch and see. A spirit does not have flesh and bone, as I have. So we see Jesus revealed as, as physically, uh, but very healthy and very strong. Also, Christ is not an ideal that lives on after death as an example of continuing inspiration. You know, we often hear people say, oh, yes, he's an ongoing inspiration to us, you know, living on as an ideal. Uh, John Stott uses this example of K. Guava. Uh, in his 39 years before being killed in the jungle, uh, he had been a doctor, an author, an economist, a banker, a theorist, and a guerrilla fighter. Um, he was a legend, a folk hero, and in every Cuban classroom, the children would say, we will be like K, or Chi. Uh, after he died, his influence was even stronger. He gave Marxism the image of a saint and a martyr with the slogan, Chi lives. Um, so is this what we mean when we say, Jesus lives, Jesus lives? In the same way. Well, not at all. Jesus doesn't live in that same way. Because his ideal doesn't just live on. He's not an ideal that lives on. Jesus is not an ideal that lives on in us. It's something far different. Because Jesus is physically alive, like I am alive. He's also not just a resuscitated corpse. Why am I saying that? Because isn't that what I was saying? No, because a corpse that is just resuscitated will die again. A corpse that's just resuscitated is subject to die again. It's subject to death. Think about Lazarus in the New Testament. Lazarus was dead, and Jesus called him back from death. But Lazarus was going to die again. He would have to face dying all over again. Jesus was also not revived from a faint or a swoon on the cross. As the Islamic or Muslim tradition might say, we see that he was dead for 36 hours or so. Yet he was not brought back to life to die again. He was raised with a new body, a different body, a special body, as it were. Yet he kept the scars that he received on the cross, on his side, on his hands, from the thorns. Yet this body is one that would not die. It's not a corpse not a ghost.
This is an event that actually happened in history to a physical person in history who lived in history and who died in history, who was put in a tomb, buried in history, and who rose from the dead in history. That's the thing. And who is alive in history. That's the difficult thing for, for us to accept. He is alive today. That is the hardest thing. Easy, alive. Easy, dead. Alive, difficult. Easy, dead. Maybe an ideal in our hearts. Difficult, alive today. Maybe you might be able to accept him as an ideal, but alive? Maybe as a spirit? No. Alive today. Not easy to accept. But what does it all mean? His death on the cross actually means something. But can we accept it without the resurrection? Because if we accept that the cross is more than just a symbol of suffering, we know that he had to die for our sin. There has been this gulf between us and God. And that's sin. Christ had to die for that sin, but he had to be sinless. Someone had to be sinless to gulf that gap so that we could be reunited with God. Now, none of us could do that because we were all sinful. We had sin in us. So we could not fix that divide. But Christ, who was both God and man, could bridge that gap. And he could die to take our place and bring us together. Now, many theories try to explain the resurrection away, but the crowd of witnesses are too great. There is the centurion who witnesses the death of Christ. And there are so many people willing to die as martyrs. And then there is the reappearance of Jesus at, at, the, at the ascension. Um, but I'll talk about those just now. And there are those there with Thomas and there are those without Thomas. Um, more than 500 uh, in Corinthians that could be cross-examined. The empty tomb, from the empty tomb to the reappearance of Christ to the foundation of the church, that short period of time, there's just so much evidence to Christ being alive to today. It is amazing. And if you do not believe, all you need to do is pray to find that Christ is alive. But why is it so important to hold on to 2,000 years or more later or less? Why is it so important? Why is it at the center of our faith? Why is it at the center of our hope or our assurance? Why is it right there? Well, for one, it, is set, it assures us of our forgiveness. How can we be sure that we're forgiven without the resurrection? Paul tells us that if Christ had not been raised, our preaching would be useless. And therefore, so is your faith. And we are still in our sins. And those who had fallen asleep in Christ, those who died in Christ, would be lost. And that's a terrible situation. Everything is useless. Basically, 
believe is unforgiven, and everything is pointless. The resurrection assures us and it proves that Christ did not die in vain. And when you trust in him, you will find forgiveness, free forgiveness. Resurrection validates the cross. It means that it all means something. Now the resurrection also points to our future as believers. It means that we have a future. And that future begins now. Because death is not the end. And Christ is our future. Christ is often called the first fruits of what is to come for us. When we die, we are with Christ. That is what Paul says, you know, I will be with Christ. It is beyond to die as gain, to live as Christ. But it is not our final destination. Jesus will return one day and return with heaven and the hosts of heaven. And he will come to judge, but he will not only come to judge, he will come to reign. And when he returns, we will be raised. And we will be raised with perfect bodies like Christ. Bodies like Christ's body. And we will be raised imperishable, as Paul puts it, bodies that are imperishable, bodies that will not be able to be destroyed, resurrection bodies. And we, he will reign and we will reign with him. And that's the living hope for us all. And we will reign heaven on earth with Christ. That living hope for us all. And that's something that we can look forward to. Christ reigning. Heaven on earth, God with us forever. So when we look to Christ, our risen Jesus, alive today, we can go to him. We can come to him. We can speak to him every day who knows what you are going through because he has been through it. Who knows what you are going through and wants you to know that God has triumphed and has won. And he will triumph in the end. And he cares about you and is working for your good. And with that, let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are working for the good of your people. Thank you that you are risen today and that you are alive. And that you love your people and that you are working for the good of your world. Encourage and build up those who trust in you. We look forward to seeing the work of your resurrection work through us. Into your world. And to reach all by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, Amen. And I'll see you again soon. God bless you all.